Matching games, or memory games, are one of the most common types of games for learning phonics. They can work in all kinds of classes, are usually popular with the children, and are effective. In the standard game, cards are laid upside down on a table or floor. Children take turns to turn over two cards. If the cards make a pair, they take the cards. If there is no pair, the turn passes to the next child. The game can also be played with the cards on the board attached by magnets or tape, or with the children racing to turn over cards in another part of the room, either individually or in teams as a relay race. There are also many digital versions of the game. This type of game can be played at every stage of phonics. The children can match pairs of letters, or match letters with anchor words. They can match individual words, match words and pictures, match words from the same phonics family, match sentences and pictures, and so on. Once you have a basic grid on your computer, it's easy to type in whatever letters or words the children need to practice. Print it out, make two copies, cut out the individual pieces of paper, and the game is ready. Of course, it is better to play with more robust laminated cards. But the game works, even with pieces of paper. More advanced versions of the game include matching opposites, matching three of a kind or four of a kind, matching half sentences, matching sequences of sentences, and so on. Sets of words. In these games, the children try to find sets of words that start with a certain letter or are of the same phonics family. The children can sort picture cards into phonics families. For example, they can throw a sticky ball at the cards and when they hit a card, write it in the correct category in a grid. They can look for words in large pictures, such as a farm, the city centre, the beach or the zoo. They can find things in the classroom or in their bags. They can think of things they have at home. Or they can do a treasure hunt and search for cards that you have hidden around the room. Games of this kind, where the children put words into sets of phonics families, are very important for deepening learning, because they help children see patterns and connections. Downloadable matching games. There are matching games that can be downloaded around the internet. For example, Dave and Amy Games publish Flip and Read, Read and Match, and Look and Match. I will give a link to those games in the description below. Dominoes Dominoes can be a fun way to practice phonics families. A good way to play dominoes is for the children to match pictures from the same phonics families, such as matching a picture of a car and a picture of a shark. I will give a link in the description to how to play dominoes. Matching words and pictures. This game is played with letters and matching anchor words, words and matching pictures, or sentences and matching pictures. Each child places pictures in a row, a circle, or some other kind of track. A child rolls a dice and moves a piece the appropriate number of cards. She then places the matching letter word or sentence on the card that she lands on. The aim is to cover each of the pictures. The game can also be played in teams. Go Fish I expect you know how to play this game. Just in case you don't know, I will put the rules in the description below. Go Fish can be a great game at every stage of phonics, especially for matching words from the same phonics family. Bingo 
there are many ways to play bingo. One way is for the children to match pictures with words or letters. The children have a grid with the letters or words, and there is a pile of matching picture cards. The children take turns to turn over the top card from the pile and say what it is. Each child who has the matching word or letter covers it with a chip or counter. An interesting way to play the game that builds up anticipation is for the children to guess what the next picture card will be before they turn it over and get a bonus if they are correct. You can see the video How Children Learn For for a discussion on why it is so important to build up anticipation. Bingo grids can be made by the teacher. Alternatively, the teacher can dictate words for the children to write in their grids, or the children can choose which words to write from a larger selection of words provided by the teacher. When the children make their own bingo grids, each child chooses where to write the letters or words, so that each bingo grid is different. Another way to play bingo when learning phonics is to use a grid such as in this illustration. The children throw dice. If a child throws a one, she puts a chip or counter on one of the squares with one dot and reads whatever is in the square, and the same with the other numbers. The aim is to make a complete row. I will give a link in the description to where you can download these kinds of games. Musical Chairs I expect you know the game Musical Chairs. In the traditional game, children move around a circle of chairs while music is playing. When the music stops, they try to sit down, but there are fewer chairs than there are children, so one or more of the children can't sit down. There are various ways to play musical chairs in the English class. One way is to have picture cards on the chairs. While the music is playing, the teacher or one of the children writes a word or a phonics family on the board or holds up a card. When the music stops, the children try to sit on cards from the same phonics family and then call out the words. Passing two bags The children are in a circle and pass two bags around the circle in opposite directions. The bags contain pictures, letters, words or sentences. Have music playing. When the music stops, the children holding the two bags draw one item from the bags. If they match, they are put aside. If they don't match, they put them back in the bag. The aim is to take all of the items out of the bags. One bag could contain letters, and the other bag anchor words, or they could match words and pictures, sentences and pictures two pictures of things from the same phonics family, or anything like that. Robbers It is best to play this game in a room where children can run around, and there needs to be a lot of picture cards or word cards. Place a few phonics families cards, such as R or E, around the room. Place the picture and word cards on a table. Draw lots for some of the children to be robbers. The children who are not robbers rush to the table, take a card, and rush to put it down by the correct phonics family card. The children can take turns to do this, or they all do it at the same time. The children who are robbers rush to steal cards from the cards that have been put down. Each thief can only steal cards of a certain type. For example, words starting with a certain letter, or animals, or something like that. If there are enough children, one or two children can be guard dogs that try to touch a robber before she can take a card she has stolen back to her starting place.
I will introduce more games in the next video.